Let's see what power I wield. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Yes, ma'am. You speak, I can. Okay, we're going to start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance because today is the Air Pollution Control District Board meeting. It is December 9th. Hand over heart, ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and apologize to the board for the delay in getting started, but life got in the way. Um, next up, we have our minutes from our November 11th meeting. There's a motion. The motion is to, yes, that's right. January, yep. Motion in a second. <laughs> Any objection to the motion? Hearing none. So ordered. Public comment. Any public comment cards submitted? We have no public comment cards. Thank you. That's even better. Uh, board comments. Are there comments from the board members? Happy holidays. Yes, there will be a happy holidays. Other comments? Especially happy. Um, I, just real quick, I have a couple I'd like to make today as we meet. Actually, from 2 to 4 this afternoon, Cal EPA will be discussing the preliminary concepts for recommended approaches for developing California Environmental Quality Act thresholds of significance for greenhouse gases. And I'm sure our CPO is aware of this. Um, all of these things will be coming to us as they go through the scoping plans and all of that that are required under AB 32 and 375. Um, and I have one other comment, and that was there was an article in Thursday's paper, uh, December 4th, and it talked about a CSU Fullerton research team that released a study this month that showed that the state economy loses about $28 billion annually because of illness and deaths linked to ozone and particulates. And that might be a report worth taking a look at um, just for staff. And if there's anything that you think of importance to provide to us, that would be welcome. And that's it. Any other comments? Hearing none. There is not a closed session plan for today, so we'll move ahead with the regular agenda. Item number six, a service award. Mr. Viegas. Chair Long, members of the board, I'm Mike Viegas, Air Pollution Control Officer, and it's a great honor to be before your board today. I'd like to present uh, Supervisor Flynn with a service award for 32 years of service on the Air Pollution Control Board, which is, I think, unprecedented. Is that a record? Yes, and I, it absolutely has to be. Uh, Supervisor Flynn was instrumental in uh, supporting my predecessor, Dick Baldwin, in forming a public information uh, program at the district. Uh, it's a small program, but it's a mighty program, and we certainly appreciate his support. And, and the other thing I really want to credit with Supervisor Flynn for is he was here when I was a rule engineer, and we were coming forward with the oil field rules, the boiler rules, the engine rules, Rule 59 for the power plants, and I can remember you know, testimony on those rules where we don't want to do it, it's going to be too expensive. Uh, Rule 59, Edison was upset, the rate payers were upset, but the board had the courage and the for intestinal fortitude to, uh, to move forward. And when you look at the successes that have happened uh, from that rulemaking program, the increase in population, the increase in vehicle miles traveled, and the dramatic decreases in days over the ozone standard, and the dropping also on the particulate matter side, I, I think it really tells a lot of you know the difficult uh, decisions the Air Pollution Control Board made uh, back in those, especially in the 80s and early 90s, and now we're reaping the rewards of that courage that the board had, and certainly Supervisor Flynn was part of that. And with that, I'd like to present this award Supervisor Flynn. Right. One, one last picture. I, I won't be using this in uh, campaign literature. And what about one with Brian? Did you use Brian? Brian? Brian's fine. Oh, that's a good one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Viegas and, and uh, Supervisor Flynn for your service. 
Uh, next item is item number seven, and it's uh, Air Pollution Control District Management Resolution. Mr. Nicole. Madam Chairman, members of the board, what you have before you here is the resolutions that are roughly the equivalent of those that are done for the general county. It is the approval of the increase in the flex credit benefit amount for the management and confidential clerical employees of the Air Pollution Control District, as well as an increase in base salary. The increase in the flex credit allowance is to take it from the $260 per month that we have currently to raise it for the next premium year to 273. This is the equivalent of what is provided to all of our bargaining units and to actually everyone in the county at this point. You receive the same payment for health insurance whether you are the CEO of the organization or the receptionist at the front desk at APCD. We have the same level rate applicable to all employees. With regards to the general salary increase, this provides for a salary increase split in two ways. It is split between the management employees who will receive a salary rate increase of 1.47% and a salary rate increase for the clerical confidential employees who are covered by the same resolution at a value of 1.75% in base pay. When you add these two groups together, roughly the cost of this to the county is just slightly under 1.5%. We recognize, given the current cost of living, that this is less than that current cost of living. However, given our financial times, this is the increase that we believe will help us maintain a reasonable place in our market and provides for an average increase of 1.5% in base pay, with slightly more for those clerical confidential employees who are at the lower end of the pay rate. I'd be happy to respond to any questions you may have. Questions? Excuse me, motion and a second. Any objection? Hearing none, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Nicole. Thank you. Good job. Item 08, number 8, is um, an overview of SB 375. Mr. Vegas. I'm going to give your board a quick overview of SB 375. SB 375 was signed in law by the governor in September of this year. The purpose of the bill is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from transportation sector by reducing vehicle miles traveled. This is to be accomplished by integrating transportation, land use, and housing planning. The bill will require coordinated efforts of the California Air Resources Board, the California Transportation Commission, the California Department of Transportation, a newly formed Regional Targets Advisory Committee and the Metropolitan Planning Organizations. The Air Resources Board is required by January 31st of next year to appoint a Regional Targets Advisory Committee to recommend factors and methodologies to be used in setting transportation greenhouse gas emission reduction targets for each Metropolitan Planning Organization region. The local air pollution control districts are expected to be part of this advisory committee along with representatives from the Metropolitan Planning Organizations, along with the League of California Cities, the California State Association of Counties, local transportation agencies, and others. The advisory committee needs to provide its recommendations to the Air Resources Board by September 30th of next year. ARB will then provide each metropolitan planning organization with final greenhouse gas emission reduction targets by September 30, 2010. Each metropolitan planning organization must then adopt a sustainable community strategy into its regional transportation plan and submit the strategy to the Air Resources Board for approval. If the Air Resources Board determines that the, community, the sustainable community strategy is unable to achieve the greenhouse gas emission reduction targets, the Metropolitan Planning Organization either has to revise that or come up with an alternative planning strategy. This process to develop the sustainable community strategy is expected to occur in the Skag region, which includes our county, 
with the next regional transportation plan update, and that would be in 2012. And the actually the bill is is really it's not punitive in nature. It's it's, it's really driven by incentives and. It provides incentives for the implementation of the sustainable communities strategy, uh, and one example of that is CEQA streamlining. Projects that qualify as transit priority and that are consistent with the sustainable community strategy or the alternative planning strategy are entitled to an exemption or a streamlined CEQA review. And these transit priority projects have to be at least 50% residential any commercial use must have a floor area ratio of at least 0.75, so it looks like multi-story. They have to have a minimum density of 20 units per acre and have to be within a half mile of a major transit facility or a high quality transit corridor. And that high quality transit corridor, let's say it was bus service, that's a 15 minute headway. SB 375 also creates a streamlined CEQA process for these transit priority projects do not, do not merit a full CEQA exemption. In addition, residential or mixed-use projects that meet certain uh, criteria and that are consistent with the sustainable communities strategy also receive some CEQA streamlining. They would not be required to analyze greenhouse gas emissions from automobiles and light trucks address growth inducing impacts from automobiles and light trucks or analyze any reduced density scenarios under their CEQA process. Uh, that's all I have. I realize that's brief, but I'm happy to answer questions. Questions? Comments? You know, this uh, whole SB 375 is such a good opportunity to put together the regional bodies in the county mm -hmm. because we can, particularly when if we don't do this sustainable community strategy ourselves, CARB's going to do it for us. Mm -hmm. So like the RENA process, or RENA process, we really need to come together both as APCD and BCOG and BCTC, and this is a really good opportunity to do that, to, to formulate a good um, strategy for meeting 375. I'll go ahead. Is there a, a motion that you need to have? It's a receive and file action. Move Are there any other comments? Receive and file. It's a motion and second to receive and file. Um, I, and I agree with your comments. And, I, and, and we've said, had this be discussion before in front of this body that the coordination that is so important to occur between this body, transportation, our land use planners, energy folks um, over this period of time will be valuable, I think, in helping us to do this as painlessly as possible and, and in fact, as um, opportunity as possible and how we look at the future for our community. Yeah, one of the interesting things is in this bill is it does allow SCAG to work in sub-regions due to SCAG's immense size. So, you know, there are the questions that when I went to the SCAG workshop with many of the cities and county representatives, they, they did look at possible implementation on a Ventura County basis. So. Okay. Thank you for the giving us that outline, though. Appreciate it. Um, motion and second to receive and file. Any objection to that? Hearing, hearing none, so ordered. Um, correspondence agenda? Receive and file. Motion to receive and file. Second. Correspondence agenda. And a second on that. No objections. Hearing none. That wraps up our meeting. Have a wonderful holiday, all. Merry oh, Christmas. I know, I tell you, man. But we yeah, thank you. Thanks, money, you know? Mike, thanks for waiting Take for a us. bus. I stole a bottle of water, though. Yeah. So, our compliments. Thank thanks. you, Mike and Zach, and have a wonderful holiday. Yeah, I, I swear, I swear, I just.